Hello, fantastic teachers. Do you ever finish the bag of biscuits or crisps uh, when you had sworn that you would only have one crisp or one biscuit? Well, if so, you're not alone. That's what I did actually last week. And that's why I wanted to share it with you because I know there are lots of people out there who do exactly the same. So here are three hacks not to finish the bag. And it's good to know those three hacks because first, of course, they will help you not finish the bag, but also it will be the time for you to take a pose, have a pose and think about the reasons why you actually want to finish the bag. And the second benefit you can have is that you're going to give yourself some room to re-decide, either to keep on eating the, the, the biscuit or the cookies or the crisps or whatever if you want to, or change your mind because that's also an option and I'm going to show you how. The third thing is that when you pose, when you have a little break, then you're giving yourself the room, the possibility to eat less, to savor your food and then to digest better. So let's go back to that situation I experienced not so long ago. I had bought a packet of biscuits and I had eaten five of them. There were still five left in the packet. And I noticed, I was telling myself, well, once I've eaten the whole bag, the whole packet of biscuits, then everything will be better. And the thing is that when I have told myself, once I've eaten the whole bag, then I'll feel better, I noticed I was feeling rushed. And what did I do when I felt rushed this way? Well, I ate the remaining biscuits and then I justified it to myself like, oh, well, now I have a clean slate. And the third thing that I did is that I didn't question my reasoning. I just went for all for it. But the result of that behavior, the impact that behavior had on me was that I was preventing myself from being better right now. And what's always really interesting is that the number of biscuits that were left in the bag, that's not what made me feel rushed. It's possible. A packet of biscuits, five biscuits, five crisps, whatever it is, they can't generate an emotion for me, for one of my clients or for anyone else. It's impossible. But just sit here. They can't produce an emotion for anyone. But if I felt rushed, it's only because I was telling myself, well, once I've eaten the whole bag, then everything will be better. This sentence, these words in my brain, that's what created that emotion of rushed. And I didn't eat the remaining biscuits because they were there. No, I don't do things because things are there. I don't watch TV because there's a TV. But I did end up eating the five remaining biscuits because I was telling myself, well, once I've done that, everything will be better. This is what drove me to feel rushed and take action. And I didn't prevent myself from being feeling better right here, right now, because they were biscuits, but I prevented myself from feeling better right here, right now, because I believed that if the packet, the bag of biscuits was empty, then I would be better. Everything would be better. So you see that this thought, everything will be better once I finish the packet. This thought is what actually drove me to eat the remaining biscuits. And the very good news is that that thought is actually an option. I chose to believe, well, if this is empty, then everything would be better. So of course, it's very compelling <laughs> for me to eat the remaining biscuits, except that it's not true. So there are three errors in that thought. Once I've eaten the whole bag, the whole bag then uh, everything will be better. The first mistake is this everything. It's very absolute. It's very 100%. It's a fantasy. My life can never be ideal with or without biscuits in my mouth or in my body, right? I always feel nervous when I'm meeting somebody new 
I'll always feel uh, scared when I'm having thoughts that, are, ooh, this might be dangerous, right? That's part of what we call the 50-50. Nothing's gone wrong. Notice how that desire for the absolute is often present in our life. For instance, maybe you've noticed yourself thinking, well, I'll start fresh on Monday, right? It's this clean slate that we expect to have on Monday, except that there's no such thing as a clean slate unless we decide, okay, I can start a new right now. Second, notice that I was telling myself everything will be better, right? And it's, it sounds like a very nice thought, everything will be better, but it implies that everything is not okay right now, or things could be better, things could be good, they're not good right now, right? So it's as if eating five biscuits was bad, it's as if what I was experiencing before I started eating the five biscuits, maybe the nervosity, the nervousness, sorry, or the fear, as if that was something that was a problem for me to solve with biscuits, which is also questionable. And the third error my brain was presenting me was this will, right? Everything will be better, right? It's as if my brain really believes that it can predict the future. If this happens, then everything will be better. And that's sure, we're certain of it, <laughs> right? Except that notice that it's not future, it's not for certain, there's a condition to it. If I empty the bag, then everything will be better, which is, sounds quite ridiculous when I come to think of it now, but in the moment it felt really true, right? And it's really as if my well-being depended on the state of a bag of crisps, of a bag of biscuits, and as if I had no power over my well-being, but the bag certainly did. That's not true. So as always, I'm going to invite you to go through three phases. The first one, the one actually we've done together, is to notice. Notice what you're thinking. Notice the lies that the sentences in your brain contain. That's the first thing, noticing. The second thing is to question. So here are three questions for you if you notice that you also have that thought, everything will be better if I do this, if I finish the packet. The first question you could ask yourself is, what is everything. What is that thing that you want to be better? The second question could be, okay, what would it be like if it was better? Go there, go to the best case scenario and paint it, paint the vision for yourself. The third question you could ask yourself which could be, well, why isn't my life, life fine right now with or without five biscuits left in the back? And the third step we can take is to decide. And what I mean by decide, after noticing, questioning, we can decide. We can decide to adopt new thoughts. So here are three propositions, three suggestions, three sentences that you could choose to think when you notice your brain going towards the, if I finish the bag, then everything will be better. So the third thought is, oh, this is the time when I believe my life will be better if I finish the bag. The second thought I'm inviting you to consider could be, I believe my life will be better if I finish the bag, and it's good to know. And finally, the third thought you could choose to think could be, well, what if my life was good enough right here, right now, without me changing anything? Do you want to learn more and apply this amazing work on your internal dialogue and the effect it has on your stress eating behavior? Well, if so, I've got you covered. I'm offering a few slots for my one-to-one -one online coaching program, which is called the Stress Eating Solution. If you're interested, well, book your stress eating assessment call right here, right now, so that you can find if you're a good fit for this program. All you need to do is book this call. And if you look at the notes behind, uh, below this video, you're going to find the link. I can't wait to help you stop stress eating. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.